All across this ancient world, there are things we can't explain. Feats of engineering we have yet to match from a forgotten period in history that even though it is forgotten, the remnants of this glorious period in history are dotted all over the place in huge numbers. Thousands and thousands of giant stone structures weighing hundreds of tons and thousands of tons in some cases, all carved out of a single piece of rock before being apparently transported and raised into place without any clue as to how it was done. One such place that on the surface appears to be Roman in origin, but under further inspection, we find that the foundations are what the Romans actually built upon, meaning that this place was already at this location before the Temple of Jupiter was built on top of it. This is the case of the Romans building upon the ruins of the gods. Wait, do you hear this? How was it done is the age old question. Well, whoever originally built the foundations at this temple were so advanced, and we can't stress this enough here, so advanced that we don't know or understand how these giant stones were carved, moved, and levitated into place. We simply don't know. Baalbek is an ancient Phoenician city located in what is now modern day Lebanon, north of Beirut in the Baqa Valley. Inhabited as early as 9000 BCE, Baalbek grew into an important pilgrimage site in the ancient world for the worship of the Phoenician sky god Baal and his consort Astarte, the queen of heaven. The name Baalbek means Lord Baal of the Baqa Valley, by the way. The center of the city was a grand temple dedicated to Astarte and Baal, and the ruins of this early temple remain today beneath the later Roman temple of Jupiter, Baal. The cornerstones of the earlier temple have been found to weigh over 100 tons, and the retaining wall monoliths weigh each 300 tons, leaving present-day archaeologists, scientists, and historians mystified as to how the stones were moved, where from, and in what way they could have been manipulated into place. These blocks and another three of these enormous stones one mile from Baalbek, which weigh over 900 tons each, one thought to weigh in excess of an eye-watering 1,700 tons, are known today as the Baalbek stones and have been the subject of much debate, study, and conjecture over how they were moved and arranged. Further questions arise as to why such massive stones were necessary at the site and why the columns of the temple are also larger than they apparently needed to be. And of course, the obvious answer is the fact that we were either ignoring something of major importance, categorizing important historical texts as mythology, or we are missing the bigger picture completely with our arrogance. Later builders at the site, such as the Romans, used these early stones as the foundations for their own temples, but clearly did not move them in any way whatsoever. The immense weight and mass of these stones has led to much speculation concerning alien and ancient activity at Baalbek, and even that the site was an ancient landing pad for spaceships or via mana. None of these theories are regarded as substantial by the prevailing scholarly community, nor have they ever been or ever likely to be. Pretty sad that they won't entertain anything beyond what they have already been taught, actually. Alexander the Great conquered Baalbek in 334 BCE and renamed it Heliopolis, City of the Sun. The name still in use in 64 BC when Pompey the Great annexed the region of Phoenicia for Rome. This was still the designation for the city in 15 BC when the city became a colony of the Roman Empire. The Romans vastly improved or restored the ancient site with massive building projects, walkways, aqueducts, and roads. Under the reign of the Emperor Septimus Severus, the Grand Temple of Jupiter Baal was built and dedicated as the largest and most ornate religious building in the entire history of the Roman Empire, whose impressive ruins may still be seen today. The Romans recognized Baalbek and the stones found here as something sacred and very ancient and even created by the gods. These are the largest stones ever cut, moved and lifted in the history of human civilization that we know of, and all are located at the same location. You get a sense of the sheer size, scale and effort involved in this when you consider there were transported uphill for a mile or so before being lifted 20 and 30 feet into place. Logs would be crushed for a start, and even if they had rollers that would not break, 10,000 men dragging these things with ropes seems a bit crazy 
and does not make any logical sense. The simple fact is that this was beyond human comprehension during the Roman times, just like it is today, because just like the Great Pyramids of Egypt, this site is the remnants of an advanced civilization that date back tens of thousands of years further than we were being forced to understand, and these sites across the globe are the surviving pieces of an ancient cataclysmic event that devastated an ancient culture on this planet as foretold in ancient text. This is the only answer, guys. It is documented in mythology. Maybe we should not have been so quick to conclude that mythology was nothing more than fantastical stories by ancient cultures like the Greeks and Romans who would fantasize of gods from a golden past. They were closer to this history than we are today, after all, and the answers to this period was said to be housed in the Lost Library of Alexandria. Once the largest library in the ancient world and containing works by the greatest thinkers and writers of antiquity, including Homer, Plato, Socrates, and many more, the Library of Alexandria is popularly believed to have been destroyed in a huge fire around 2,000 years ago and its voluminous works lost. Since its destruction, this wonder of the ancient world has haunted the imagination of poets, historians, travelers, and scholars who have lamented the tragic loss of knowledge and literature. Today, the idea of a universal library situated in a city celebrated as a center of learning in the ancient world has attained mythical status. The mystery has been perpetuated by the fact that no architectural remains or archaeological finds that can definitively be attributed to the ancient library have ever been recovered. Surprising for such a supposedly renowned and imposing structure. This lack of physical proof has even persuaded some to wonder if the fabulous library actually existed at all in the form popularly imagined. Documentation of the Lost Empire, a lost civilization on this earth, whom built all the ancient structures, perished in the Great Library, leaving sites like Baalbek to drift into history as a big question mark. Only now are we beginning to try and understand what went on on this earth during the time in which has been lost to us.